tutorial, I'm going to go over the bare minimum JavaScript you need to learn to be able to do some interesting things on a web page. So I'm starting out here with a basic HTML page. Nothing fancy here. I have one style that gives a little styling to a div that I have on my page. Here's the result right over here that you can see. Um, and so to add some JavaScript to this, uh, the first thing you would need to do is um, somewhere in your body tag, you want to put in a script tag. Script tag lets your browser know that you're going to be using JavaScript. So anything you put in between here will be JavaScript. All right, so HTML and CSS are markup languages where JavaScript is a true scripting language. And um, like any scripting language, it has variables. And so a variable could be, let's look, I'm just pasting some code in here. Um, let's focus on this line here. You can create a variable. Uh, you should use the keyword let. That um, actually tells JavaScript that you're using a variable that could change. Um, and you can give it a name, whatever you like. I just happen to call this one counter and make it equal to zero. Um, it could be equal to a string of text of something. Um, it could be uh, type Boolean, which is a true or false uh, variable. Um, there's other variables too, but those are the three kind of main ones that you would need to know about. I'm going to go back to my um, number here. Um, this could be let. It could also be a constant. C-O-N-S-T is a constant. Um, in that uh, instance, though, you would never want to change this, so you wouldn't want this line here because constants variable never changes. Um, if you look at some uh, code that exists on the web, for examples of things, you'll see var used to be the common standard. It's not recommended to use anymore, but it still would work if you use it. Um, and a var could be a constant or or a, uh, a changing variable. Um, but for our sake, I recommend use let or constants. Um, right here is a line where we're actually changing. Uh, we're adding one. We're incrementing counter by one. And I have this little if statement. And if statement is a, a what's called like a logic gate, where um, if this whatever is in these parentheses here is true, then the code right here will be executed. Else, this will be executed. You don't always you don't need to have an else. Actually, I'll get rid of it. Um, so if counter is equal to one this alert will pop up and I can tell my quotations are a little messed up here because I'm taking them from a Word document. Um, and so this is how you can display something to the screen. Um, this is just plain text. I could make this anything. And then this is whatever your variable is equal to. So if I hit save, I come here to my page, I get this alert pop up, counter is equal to one. Now, if I went in here and put counter equal to two, now nothing happens. I don't get my pop-up. But if I did have an else part to this and made another alert, and I'm just going to put else in there, save, and now else pops up. All right. So that's uh, basics of how a variable could work. You can you declare it with a let or constants. You could change it at some point um, in your uh, code, like the plus plus here increments it, which is the same as um, counter equals counter plus one. All right, so that's very basics of uh, JavaScript variables and some uh, logic with an if statement. Um, but uh, the <clears throat> where you really get some power with any language is using what's called functions. And so I'm going to create a function right here and you use the keyword function and then you could give it a name whatever name you want i'm just calling it my function open and close parentheses you know, this is required for a function um, you could have parameters in here i'm not going to go into it. it's beyond the scope of this tutorial um, in a successive tutorial i'll show you um, how you could use parameters um, so this is one way you can create a function and then we could actually um, grab this code here and put it in here. And um, so now this code, I'm gonna hit save. Um, you'll notice nothing happens on the screen because you, the code inside your function does not get executed unless you actually um, call your function. And so I would have to have a line like this 
put close parentheses, semicolon, and hit save. And now my function is called. I get my pop-up. Okay, um, that's all great. Um, but where uh, the true power of JavaScript comes in when you interact with the elements on your page. And so I'm going to get into that. Um, but before I do, I want to show you it's real important to, um, and when you start doing any kind of uh, development with JavaScript, in whatever browser you're using, um, you there should be a developer's console. And so in Chrome, I'm clicking on View. You probably can't see that. But then this pops down, and I get Developer and JavaScript. And that's going to open the console. And we'll use this uh, momentarily. But this is great for troubleshooting. You will, the, will actually let you know um, what the error is if you're having an error and uh, what line that error um, is on. And so um, let's let's add some interactivity. That's the power of JavaScript. So I have this div that has an ID that's equal to my ID. And I'm going to add this JavaScript function on click. And when we click this div, I'm actually going to call this function. We'll say my function. Um, and so I'll get rid of this line. So now we're not calling this function automatically, but only when I click this div. And see, I click around the screen, nothing happens, but I click this div. Oh, um, I forgot my open close parentheses, save. There we go, and get my pop-up, okay? That's great. Now, if, um, let's see, I change this to my div two. Um, when I come here and I click here, I get an error because it can't find my function, which is really good, valuable um, uh, error reading function that tells me what my issue is. And so I know that I need to make sure that this matches this, okay? Um, so uh, another thing, we were having these pop up in alerts. I could use, they're kind of annoying, the alerts. When you're testing things out, it's preferable to use um, console.log. And let me show you how that works. Click here. And now that what was an alert is now just showing in the console. Um, you see, we keep incrementing and it's on the else part, right? All right, so <clears throat> now that's real great. But now let's say you had something that you actually wanted to show um, people on your page and you didn't want a, an alert, you could use, um, you can actually show it embedded into this div. And let me show you how you do that. Um, I'm going to kind of get rid of the is, if else for a second. And let's say I just want to show the counter here. Um, you, you have access to the DOM, which is basically objects in your page. And so how you access them is you use the keyword document, then you do um, there's all kinds of connectors here, a dot connector, and there's um, we're going to be interested in this get element by ID. Uh, we have this ID right here, and so we want to access that element, and I'm going to just put it in quotes right here. And so now this says, all right, we're, we're accessing this div because we know this ID. What do we want to do with it? There's all kinds of things we can do with it. I'm just going to show you a few, and one of the probably the most powerful ones is something called inner HTML right here. And so let me move this over so you can see it. And we're going to make our, we're going to change our inner HTML, which means we're going to replace what is in here. Um, you can do all kinds of things with this, but we're going to kind of have what we had in that alert. We'll say counter and we're going to connect it with a plus sign to show our variable um, and then a semicolon and hit plus. And so now we can see, we see our counter incrementing which is great. Um, so that's super useful. <clears throat> if we did not want to replace this text, but just add to it instead, um, we could actually um, use a plus sign right here. So plus equals adds to it. Um, I'm gonna actually put a little line break in here. Save, and now if I click in here, see it goes down a line and we never um, replace this, we just add it to it. Um, that's very handy. Um, all right, so let me show you another thing you can do that's very powerful is that you can actually, based on some input, change the uh, style. Um, so document, get element by ID, and we're going to, um, instead of, uh, well, actually, maybe we'll leave the inner HTML, but I'm going to add another thing here. And I'm going to say style 
and I'm going to make this equal to um, background color and we'll change the background color to green let's say um, so whenever we click here now it's green all right and here we'll do we'll do one other thing you see how we can combine that logic I was telling you about let's just make the background color green whenever um, counter is equal to two all right and so double equals is for comparison one equal sign is for assigning a value okay um, so let's hit save come back and so counters one so when next click we should get green perfect um, and let's make it so that it toggles back all right so let's let it toggle back to the original state which was I think I had it as ah, bisque save one green and then back perfect um, and you can combine um, styles here so if you're gonna have more than one style I would put a semicolon right there and let's say I want to change the color of the text to red um, I could do that it's save and so you could keep entering um, various yeah there we go and it stays it goes back now um, so the uh, you can keep entering multiple uh, as many styles as you want just uh, put semicolons and then add a next one um, for if you want to do that so so that's very valuable all right last thing I'm going to show you is how an, another really important way to interact with your page is to have uh, what's called some form elements and so I'm going to put an input here um, which is a self-containing tag um, and I'm going to put a button as well and um, say click me save and you see how I have um, an input and a button and let's give these some IDs we'll say uh, actually we don't need an ID here but I'm going to change this clicking thing to the button so that when we click on the button we'll call that function and then here we need to give an ID here so because we want to be able to access this so we'll say um, you know my input and <clears throat> now if I um, come down here uh, I want to get um, access to that value so whatever I type in here I want to be able to access it um, and and print that to my screen using this inner HTML so I'm going to say um, let um, value equals um, and I just made up you know, I can call this whatever I want but let's do we'll do this whole document by ID but I'm going to need to change that ID to match this ID so it's my input right and I'm going to put dot value and so I'm saving whatever the value is that was in that input to this variable and then I'll use that to print it out right here oh, value and I'll just put value here so we can see it let's save um, and so my value save and there it is um, and I could actually keep adding things here um, that's the second time through so it's green if I if it's empty it'll just show an empty value um, so that's a really powerful um, thing one last thing I'll show you is like so you can have a style that whenever you click the button you want the button to disappear that's actually something you can do um, so I'm gonna I'll grab this here and right underneath here I'm gonna say um, I need to be able to access my button now though so I'll say ID equals um, my button right and so I can do that my button and I have display and equal to none so now when I click that button it disappears so that's really cool this is super basic um, but very powerful with simple you don't need to know a whole lot of programming uh, just some simple stuff and you can do some very powerful things um, and interact with your website
Uh, let me know if you have any questions.